Okay, welcome everyone to our uh, application workshop on the European Commission's new artist mobility funding strand, Culture Moves Europe. So we're here today in our capacity as the Creative Europe Desk Ireland Culture Office. We are funded by the European Commission to advise and assist Irish applicants uh, in accessing European funding for culture, primarily through the Creative Europe programme, the EU's main funding programme for the culture and creative sectors across Europe. Um, the Creative Europe Desk Ireland is a mini network of three offices, along with ourselves, who are based in the Arts Council. We also have the Media Office Dublin and the Media Office Galway. Um, next slide, Aoife. Sorry. I, I, I know the next slide. <laughs> I <can> just <laughs> We've done this before. So I think it's just really the next slide is really talking about what... Um, what we do so as i was saying we really fulfill a kind of developmental um role for the sector here in in helping them make european uh, applications we work closely with key uh, national stakeholders obviously the main one being the arts council in order to leverage our uh, sort of where you speak leverage our capacity to reach as wide an audience as possible so what we really are here to do is is help you understand uh <laughs> EU funding, what they're looking for, and assist you in making uh, in making applications. So I think um, just as we're so the reason I'm having Eva present is this always happens to me, and I decided it wouldn't today. So I might um, I might call on Fanula now. Fanula Gygax is an actor, theatre maker, and writer based in Dublin, and um, from her bio, she is passionate about creating contemporary theatre work and uh, writing bold new works for film and television. So Fanula is here to tell us a bit about um, her experience with iProtunis. Hi everybody. Um, first of all, it's so nice to be asked to do this, particularly because it brought me back to memory lane of 2019 and getting this award and getting to go to Berlin, which now feels like quite a long time ago um, post COVID. So it was really nice to actually dig back into my archives about, you know, I brought my notebook along that I kept while I was over there. And uh, and it was amazing to kind of look back and think about what that opportunity and I suppose what it gave me in loads of ways at that time. But I'll just give you a little bit of a background into me and my practice, I suppose. Um, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about the residency that I was lucky enough to take part on. Um, so I studied drama and theatre studies in Trinity. And while I was there, I was very interested in devising and creating new contemporary works. At the time, I had interned with Pan Pan Theatre Company, and I was very inspired by, I suppose, their connection to Europe and this kind of experimental theatre that I suppose I felt at the time maybe I didn't see quite as much of um, in Ireland and I was quite thirsty for that kind of work and to learn more. Um, and so, you know, when things like the Dublin Theatre Festival would happen, I'd really try to go and see all of the international work and to just learn more about companies abroad, because I think um, because Ireland is an island and we're quite small, it can feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect between us and this kind of European theatre circuit and I was kind of eager to to be a part of it um, all through college and so after college um, you know I started making my own work and I set up a theatre company um, with two other um, two other women and so I kind of worked independently but also with these two women and in both facets what I was really interested in was sort of playing with form um, and, you know, to find kind of interesting ways to tell a story rather than kind of the straight play, I suppose, at the time. Um, and so I made a few works um, for the Fringe Festival and different, you know, different festivals. And in 2018, Pan Pan actually had a call out for a mentorship program called the um, Pan Pan Mentorship Program, International Mentorship Program, so that's important. And the mentor who was going to be on that year is a woman called Johanna Freiburg from, um, from Germany, who is a member of two um, very experienced and successful theater collectives called Shishi Pop and Gob Squad. And so I, was, I had seen a Shishi Pop show and had been in college and was really inspired by how they made work. And it looked really bold and out there and 
very brave and kind of what they were doing, like using their own testimony to kind of create these amazing kind of theatrical extravaganza, extravaganzas that felt quite, you know, on the line between theater and performance art, but I was very eager to kind of learn more about this practice. And so I kind of thought at the time, like what would be an idea that would frighten me to try and make a show about, um, because I thought that was a good impulse to work with someone like Johanna. And uh, at the time I was, I was thinking a lot for various reasons about pornography and the kind of impact of this kind of um, porn culture on society, I suppose. And interested in looking at, I suppose, the male and the female gaze, um, but also alongside that, I, uh, I suppose, a culture of shame in Ireland around sex and, um, and stuff like that as well. And so uh, that felt like at the time a very scary prospect to make a show about pornography um, and one that I wouldn't have made had this opportunity not come around. But I put in for this mentorship program and I got a place on it. So I was working with Johanna. And during this time, I became again more and more interested in Europe, and what people were doing in Europe. And as part of that mentorship, I got to go and um, to the Theatre Treffen in Berlin to watch some plays. And I met Johanna's theatre company and I learned a lot from her about the kind of methods of their company and the forms that they were using. And it really inspired me. But as I was making this show in Ireland, I felt very, very, um, I had a real burning desire while I was making this show to not be making it in Ireland and to be making it somewhere else. Um, I felt kind of Ireland's eyes and the kind of history of shame and all of that sort of on me as I was making this show, even though no one was actually watching me, but I just sort of felt like, actually, I would love to create a freedom to be able to make this in a different context and to kind of have to be brave or whatever. Uh, be, in in a different place and I had such a draw at the time to go to Berlin and I kept saying to people I was like I just really want to go to Germany to make this show and then it felt like a miracle but the iPort and new mobility scheme then like popped up on my uh, I think my social media and then it was sent to us through the Pan Pan mentorship um, and I it was the pilot year um, of the scheme and the premise was to, you know, get to go to somewhere in Europe and create these connections and to bring your practice there and to make to potentially develop a work there. And I just thought, oh my God, this is actually what I've like been asking um, the universe uh, for. Um, and so it felt like a bit of a miracle, but I was also like, I know this is very competitive and I'm probably not going to get it, but in order to kind of even apply I had to you know get a letter of support from Johanna and also set up I suppose um, a, a hypothesis of what my plan would be if I were to get this um, money and so Johanna helped me um, to make a connection with the theatre the Ball House Austin Prince Lauerberg in Berlin who agreed that if I were to get this I could go and spend time there for three weeks and Again, another miracle, I ended up getting the iPort and Use Mobility Scheme. And this was after I'd finished the other mentorship. So it was kind of this perfect bridge between like a project that could have ended and a project that kept going because it gave me the space to go, OK, now there's a new a new energy with this show. And it was quite a scary prospect, to be honest, to go to a different city completely on my own and to spend time in a room by myself for three weeks like a creative room and I wanted to be very disciplined about it and I wanted to take it very seriously and so I did like I created a sort of a schedule and a plan that I kind of wanted to fulfill over the three weeks um, and I brought it here today so that you could see it this is my rehearsal plan so I kind of wanted to do like a 10 to 5 day every day and treat it like I would if it were, a, you know, a work opportunity here. But it was all, I suppose, self-motivated. Um, my plan, I'll just read out some of the things that I wanted to do. Um, so I wanted to start every day with what do I want to achieve today and to try and answer that question. And then at the end of the day, I would evaluate, did I achieve this? And if not, I would come in tomorrow. I wanted... Um, every day to have a theme at the core of the exploration so because it was all self-guided I suppose I had to put these structures in place myself so a theme like a shame or costume or whatever it was 
I wanted to create as much contact, content as possible. I wanted to do 30 minutes of movement every day. I wanted to do something very scary every day. And I wanted to leave the day behind by dancing to a brilliant song. So that was sort of my plan. And so I arrived in Berlin. I luckily got, you know, um, accommodation that was quite cheap through through a friend. And I spent the three weeks um, with uh, in this room by myself. Um, I'll show you a few photographs just so you can kind of see the room. It was an amazing space. And actually what was really interesting was that the space very much ended up inspiring um, the form of the show. Um, and so I really feel like had I been in Dublin in a space that I sort of knew already, that maybe that wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't maybe have happened. So um, it was this kind of wooden room and it had all of these chairs and I ended up using these chairs as a key form for the show of imagining these <clears throat> imaginary audience members and inviting them up on stage. So I'll explain this. So a friend of mine did come over and she was able to come to the studio with me for a day. She's in my theater company. So that was great. I also, as part of it, I did a documentation every day, like a video, like a kind of a diary because I wanted to document it because I was by myself and I was in this completely new culture to kind of be quite honest about how I was feeling about it so I set up a Instagram page watch me if you want and I'll just this is an example if I it really was like the added like requested thing there so one of the big I'm in the show is shame and an embarrassment so I'm gonna kind of try and focus on that today I felt that yesterday uh when I left, I was so exhausted from the day that I just felt stupid. And I was like, why did I put up videos? And I took down all the videos I put up yesterday. So I would take these little videos and I would just work mainly by myself, but also, so this is the space and mainly, I suppose, this is the Instagram page, watch me if you want. And I would just play with these chairs and create choreograph. Um, choreography and cre like create bits of uh, text use a camera because I didn't have anyone but what the mobility scheme did also allow me to do is to continue my mentorship with Johanna so Johanna was based in Berlin so this was a really um, key part because it kind of kept that connection with a European artist which I had learned so much from her so she actually did come in at the end of my second week and watched, um, <clears throat> watched what I'd created. And then at the end of the third week, we had a dramaturgy session where we went through everything. So I was able to pay her to mentor me again through this. But I suppose ultimately what, what I found so valuable about the experience was not only from a work perspective of like this specific work, but it did allow me to immerse myself in a completely different culture, to go and see theater and art in that, city to be a part of the city and to feel like I was working in that place to get to know the cafes around the theater that I was working in um, to struggle with the language and all of those things and again I met some of Johanna's um, you know company members again and so I felt well now I know them if I go back to Berlin I can you know meet up with them so it was extremely <clears throat> valuable and I, while I was very very scared going over and I kind of thought that I, I was, it was going to be a, a bit of failure. Um, I thought I would, you know, get very lonely and I wouldn't be able to make the show and all of these stuff. But actually I was just so inspired by being in a new context. Because I think in Dublin and Ireland, you know, we, we, um, we know it quite well. It's familiar because it's small and we know the people and we go to see the art and we know it. So I suppose going to Berlin, everything was new. And I came home with a real new lease of life and it kind of inspired um, another show I ended up making after that um, in the Fringe uh, in 2020, which was called 2050. But just that whole experience, because they, you know, they play so much with form. And in general, I would say that, you know, Germans are, you know, that bit bolder and they're less shame and there's they kind of go at it. And so I kind of that spirit. um during my time there, I really felt that kind of spirit ignited for a little while. Um, and it had like a really sort of profound impact on the particular show, um, uh, the particular show. And then, um, yeah, and then my work 
my work going forward and uh and when uh when I came back um I was able to kind of pitch the show to I did a pitching event and was able to kind of say I've worked in this theater in Berlin and I had this experience um you know making making this work and that created more connections I suppose I made a connection with the theater festival in Sweden and you know so it kind of felt like it had quite um quite a profound um impact on how I saw myself as an artist and sort of the possibilities that are there because I think I never really before this scheme I just didn't know how I would even go about you know trying to get into this European thing um unless I already made a show and toured it and somehow whatever so I I just felt very lucky sort of being able to make a show from its seeds in a different in a different city um so that was my experience um if anybody would have any uh any questions um or thoughts also you can follow the um if you want to have a look at the videos I did try to be as sort of honest as possible um at the time it's it's called at watch me if you want on on Instagram and then my website is www.fanulagigax.com where you can kind of see a few more things but we can put that in we can put that in the chat thanks a million Fanula. that was so fantastic it's always Thank good to so actually watch it's it's just so good to kind of because sometimes you get really bogged down in, in the process or you know the applications and it, it's good to kind of have that reminder of you know the outcomes of it yeah. Um, one thing for me that's been my experience from talking to people is I guess some of the legacy things that have have come out and some of the, you know, you kind of obviously met a whole new set of collaborators and are you still, I guess, in contact with them? Are you still yeah, kind of working I, with them? Well, I'm not still working with Johanna, but I do, I'm, I'm still in contact. And I suppose what was unfortunate that ended up happening with this show is it had all of these plans that actually never happened because of COVID. So yeah. it was meant to be in a series of festivals. And so it actually never happened, but I still, so that's why it was really nice to go back because I just remembered how much work and soul and heart I'd sort of put in, particularly into this three, into the, these three weeks, but I had also done a couple of months before, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm totally still in contact and would, if I went over to Berlin, I would, yeah, for sure, like meet up and yeah and guess because we're going to cover it ourselves um and obviously you know one of the attractive features is the ease of the application process and was that your experience yeah yeah I think at the time like you know there's so many applications and with this uh yeah it was it, it didn't feel like you know systems overload it felt like you know if you had a quite a, a clear plan and a clear outcome and you kind of had your ducks in a line um yeah it felt it it was it was great it was nearly like that's why I said it felt like magic when I was like got it I was like oh my god like because I just really had been looking for an opportunity um had been looking for an opportunity like that to get to leave Ireland you know to try and put down some artistic roots somewhere else <laughs> oh, amazing thanks so much I don't know if there's any other questions um I think there's a lot of thank yous oh, for thank your presentation and your insights um and I know everyone will take that away so I don't know if there's any other questions or if you're um if you're um, free yeah if someone wants sorry to come in. If, if you ever think uh of working in Spain I'm based in Ireland but I'd love to work with you um so Oh, this hello. is my face. I'm studying oh, theatre performance in Cavan at the moment. Um, so cool. I'm fascinated with your story. Oh, cool. oh, thank <laughs> I think you're super brave and uh, it's great. We'll keep in touch. I follow already oh, exactly. your page. <laughs> we'll do, yeah, follow me on Instagram. And I, honestly, like it's because the show was kind of scuppered because of COVID, I kind of went okay and moved on. And actually, this has been a really nice flash of going, you know there's a reason why I was working on that show and I got so much out of it anyway without having to ever present the final piece but it's given me a bit of a niggle of you know maybe Barcelona definitely is your next step thank you yeah. nice as well. that's so nice <laughs> thank you 
Yeah. Great. Well, thanks. Maybe we'll kick on now. Thanks. Thanks Hi, again. Thank you so much. That was I'm going to jump off. Brilliant. Yeah. Take rehearsal. care. Best, best of luck with the rehearsals. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Okay, we'll just uh, kick off again. Um, I'm just going to start uh, with an overview of, um, of Culture Moves Europe. So it sits within the uh, Creative Europe program and it aligns with um, some of the overarching uh, priorities they have. So Culture Moves Europe promotes gender balance and the inclusion of artists from minorities and underrepresented groups. This scheme offers specific support to artists and cultural professionals living with a disability. Uh, the scheme, um, the target is to be geographically balanced and looking at marginalized countries. So certainly Ireland's position on the periphery of Europe um, could be a strength. Um, it's accessible to artists and cultural professionals living in rural and remote areas. So some of the things that um, as an artist you might experience as barriers living here um, can actually be uh, seen as strengths when you kind of go into the competitive context of this funding. So I should kind of say, because some of the language, uh, when, when we say artists and cultural professionals, this fund is broader than artists, and it's certainly open to anyone kind of working in, in the art. So that's what we mean there. Um, so another thing about Culture Moves Europe is uh, special attention will be given to emerging artists and cultural professionals. Um, within the kind of global context of the war on Ukraine, um, Ukrainian-based artist. Um, so the, this award covers physical mobilities, but in the case of artists, Ukrainian artists or artists based in Ukraine, they will be able to apply for costs related to a virtual mobility. Um, again, within the overarching uh, EU priority of uh, climate sustainability and uh, the Green Europe policy, um, there'll be green top-ups available for sustainable and slow travel should you choose um, that way of travel. And the scheme also offers family support cost supplements. Um, so, so this is seen as quite innovative. There's a substantial budget uh, for this. So unlike the pilot, the, the scale of this is, is much larger. There'll be 21 uh, million allocated to this over the coming years. And that will hopefully translate to 7,000 awards. Um, they're trying to make this as light touch and accessible as possible. So it operates <clears throat> on a rolling deadline. So um, each month is a target. They'll they'll cut off um, the applications and they'll assess those as a group and communicate results. So the first cutoff will be the 31st of October. Um, there's none planned for November, but the next one will be the 31st of December and uh, so on. And that will kind of open for the next one then. So we're working towards the end of May 2023. And then the next one will open after that. So who is this intended for? It's intended for individual artists and cultural professionals or groups. So this you can apply as an individual or you can apply as a collective of individuals. So you can apply for groups between two and five people. Uh, you must be 18 plus and from all educational qualifications and level of experience. And you must be resident in a Creative Europe country. So this is, it's not, it's not to do with citizenship, it's to do where, uh, with where you are based. Um, and a Creative Europe country is, it's currently at 40 countries. So it's, it's much broader than the EU uh, member states or any of that. Um, so it's open to all sectors covered under the culture strand of the Creative Europe program. So essentially this is open to all of the cultural and creative sectors aside um, from film and TV. So aside from the audiovisual, because those um, that's covered through the media program. Um, and again, um, applicants who are legally residing in Ukraine have the option to apply directly for virtual mobility. So for what? Now, this is the key takeaway that I want everyone to take today. This is very broad. It's deliberately kept to very broad. And it's a very flexible award that you can. And you could see that with Fanula's presentation. It can really it can really fit into to your practice and lots of different, you know, kind of ideas or projects you might have in mind. Let's just go through through some of them here. Um, so it's for international collaborations, production residencies or professional development. So essentially fostering uh, transnational um, artistic collaboration. 
Um, it will partially fund the cost of travel. <clears throat> but it's important to say that this is not a, a production award in a sense. Uh, you have to be very strategic. So you saw that Fanula had accessed, you know, you might access a, a residency, um, you might have um, a certain amount, a small amount of funding in place, and you can kind of work this within that. Um, it will uh, fund continuous um, so I think it's, uh, I don't think it's segmented this time. I need to check this, but essentially um, I think this might be um, from the last one. So it's a continuous uh, trip. So it lasts between uh, seven and 60 days um, and it's to one, uh, one country. So uh, what, what type of projects, and again, this is kind of how, how long is a piece of string, and that's why Aoife and I are here, you know, we can talk through uh, different ideas you have, but this is a really good um, award for kind of testing ideas or models you might be developing, you know, you might have a larger uh, collaboration in mind, but you need to kind of test the waters, you need to develop those relationships, you need to kind of test ideas, um, uh, and this, this could be a way of doing it. Where this award, because we'll go into this, um, it is a competitive award. So if you can kind of show that this is part of a kind of longer term ambition for either a specific project or your practice as an artist, that will really benefit you. Um, you can uh, use it for kind of small, uh, small scale projects meeting with partners, also attending um, workshop seminars and conferences, you might have identified something, you know, in in Belgium, that is really, really relates to your practice and could really, you know, help you to take a step up. And this is the, you know, this fund could help you get there. Um, so um, the objectives of the, the mobility, I think I'm handing over to Aoife now, and we'll just, yeah. Yep. Hi everybody, I'm Aoife Tunney. Um, so the objectives of the mobility, um, so they really are looking at international collaboration um, that could be the completion of a composition on site. So in a specific um, place in a country in Europe, um, which works in international collaboration between maybe performers or um, composers. Um, sorry, there's a little bit of a sound coming in the background sound of, if, People could mute, that would be great, uh, thanks. So the other option would be production oriented residencies. Um, the result of your mobility could be a presentation of a newly created body of work. Um, sorry, I need to move this over. Okay, great, now I'm not being able to share again. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll just stop, I'll look at my own when I'm doing it. Um, yeah, so there's a final, uh, objective there um, and that's for professional development we kind of mentioned that already professional development and um, you could be taking part in a network in network meetings showcasing showcases workshops master classes and any other training but that would have to be outside of formal education so for the mo mobility for single um, individuals the duration would be between seven and 60 days um, so it is a, an uninterrupted trip. So um, yeah, as Katie said, the pilot could be interrupted where you could go and, and come back, but it's changed. So it has to be uninterrupted. Um, for groups of individuals between five, two and five people, the duration should be between seven and 21 days. Um, the mobility will have to take place within um, a year. And that's from the start of when you sign your agreement when you are successful. So for group mobilities, one person will apply on behalf of the group and um, the group can come from and return to different countries, but they have to go to the same destination. Um, and the mobility must focus on one so single group project. Um, there'll be only funding for people who actually take part in the mobility. So they only support um, individual artists and cultural professionals who undertake uh, the actual mobility itself. Now, as we said, the, there is exceptions for artists uh, based in Ukraine. You can, um, mo you can virtually attend um, and there are specifics around that, but obviously if you can't travel, um, there are exceptions. Um, so how to apply? So you will have to create your own online account. Um, as we said at the beginning, the Goethe Institute 
runs and manages this award. So we don't actually, or the Creative Europe desk doesn't um, directly manage it, but obviously we give advice um, around it. But you will go into the online um, Gotha page and create your own account. And it's quite simple. Um, you put in your personal details, your education, your work experience, and then they'll ask for planned mobility, the dates, the destinations, um, means of transport, and then more information, as Fanula said, you know, letters of support, um, descriptions of what you're going to do, who your, your partners are, etc. cetera. Um, so within that, you'll, you'll be asked for certain documents and there'll be um, a CV, um, an artistic CV or portfolio. And for the group application, that will be all together, um, your, your portfolio kind of between you all. Um, and then your invitation letters, your meeting confirmation, um, co-production agreements, etc. Then you will be asked to, to sign a declaration on honour. So that is confirming your eligibility um, and there are exclusion criteria. So they, they'll be on the go the website. They're around, you're, you, you can't be working with a partner in, in a company. So let's say you're in an organisation, you are partnering with an organisation, then you can't be kind of working, seen to be working with them. Um, in, in a capacity. So there's stuff like that that you need to kind of clear yourself and sign. Um, so we might go back, myself and Katie, we're gonna go through the, the portal in a minute. I'll just cover these other op objectives. So as, as Katie said, it is very broad. Um, and that is the, the, the really nice thing about this award. So, um, you know, these kind of areas of explore, create, learn, connect, um, you know, they can kind of you can fit them to, to what your project might be looking at. So looking at exploring Europe's rich cultural heritage, for instance, um, taking inspiration directly from a specific site within Europe, um, looking to create, co-create or co-develop uh, with other artists and cultural practitioners for other, from other countries, um, to learn, as we said, participate in non-formal learning or connect to develop or deepen international professional relationships. So it could be something that you're currently have a relationship um, with a partner already and you're looking to develop that. And in that way, we were kind of saying that this can be worked in a strategic way along with a longer plan of what your, your practice is. It could be a follow-up of a project that you've done already or started um, developing. And, and this could be a, you know, a point within that plan looking to to kind of further work on it in the future so it is if you can kind of map it out as part of your your um your own kind of practice in the long term that would be really key to being competitive in in application stage um so we might look at the the portal now katie if you can share it yeah. this is um new territory for me but i'm gonna just try to go into the portal and show you um Sorry, just give me a second and show you um, what's, what's the name. Hold on. So I think it's important to say with this that basically the most important thing is the work you do in, you know, before you've ever, you know, before you've ever gone into the portal to make an application because the process itself is very simple. They don't want a huge amount of information. A lot of it is just done, you know, kind of online on the form, um, but it's the thinking you do beforehand. So I think that's, and you could see that with Sanula, why that worked really well, because she had kind of an idea already and it was kind of ready to go. So I have gone in and uh, made an account, it takes about 30 seconds, and this will take you into this portal. The thing about uh, once you kind of create a new application, you really, um, you'll be, it kind of automatically saves and you can come back and edit and you don't have to necessarily, which I really like, um, you know, kind of do it in sequential order. You know, you can kind of work on different parts. So I'm going to click in to edit um, and then show you what you'll see. So Aoife's taken, we've, we've kind of gone through um, a number of these. So it's kind of uh, set fields. Uh, you'll see they'll ask for some, 
they'll ask for some kind of data here that they're going to use because really the one thing about European funding and the commission is every seven years they kind of have to make the case again and if they can kind of give a picture of who is kind of accessing and getting this funding it builds their case to, you know it, it strengthens their case uh, to you know to make the case for funding for the arts and culture so they are going to ask for some information about where you live size of the city your level of uh, education all of that um, and they kind of say in the call what that's for but there's kind of a bit a bit of basic information here but I'm just going to take you in because I think this is um this is kind of fantastic but I'm going to take you in hopefully to the right section where um it's about your mobility um and the the budget because it's very very easy so I just have to find um the section I'm in I think it might be here is it um so details about the mobility and the budget. So this is an automatic um, calculation. So you'll see here, I have selected a mobility kind of towards the maximum of 57 days. So I don't know if we've gone into this, but they'll also give you a top up if the country you're traveling to requires a visa. So I'm saying it doesn't. Um, I'm not traveling from um, an overseas country or territory, and that doesn't really relate to Ireland, uh, but I'm saying no. Um, so I'm just answering all these questions. Um, I have kind of said they'll ask you, in this case, I'm traveling with my infant, so I've said yes. Um, and then here is the, um, I'm selecting my mode of transportation. So I think we go into this, but in the case um, of this destination, it's over 600 kilometers. I'll show you here. Um, so you'll see, I'm saying my starting point is Dublin and my destination is Hamburg and they have automatically uh, calculated the distance. It's over 600,000 and it's, I have selected that I'm traveling by plane. And you can see here, they have calculated my budget. So they've calculated the daily allowance as being 4,275. They've uh, given me my flight allowance. I'm, I haven't selected a, you know, kind of a sustainable or slow mode of travel. So there's no top up for that. They've given me my family support top up and they've calculated my final grant. Um, so I think that is, it's very simple. And as I said, I'm just going to stop quickly. As I said, the work here for all of you, your work here is actually the thinking and the development and possibly the, the contacts and relations you have beforehand. The process itself is um, extremely straightforward. Um, so I'm going to share, I think we're back to the presentation if I can find it yeah do you want to share it because mine is I am going to share it yeah I have to um I have to find it though I think it's I think it's this one okay so have we gone through um what is expected let me just start from here so are you you all probably would think we've never done this before and we have <laughs> um Okay. Do you want me to go on or will, will yeah. I? Okay. Um, so yeah, so the, the evaluation, yeah, just in the, in the one before that, it, it's, it's really what Katie was saying. It's about um, what they expect you to have for your application. So it's the, the prep work really beforehand. So it's describing your, your outcomes and your project and, and kind of how you will develop this with your partner and the work within the mobility itself, how you will achieve, achieve your objectives. So that's the kind of the key work you need to be doing in the run up to it. I mean, it's not like a, a massive research project, but it is something that if you put in in the effort now and you're working with your, your partners um, in, in the time beforehand, it'll make it easier and it'll make it a, a stronger application. Um, the evaluation process, so there'll be two independent uh, expert evaluators assessing your application. Um, they will be looking at areas of relevance, necessity, the extent to which the mobility will assist you achieving the outcome. So there, how, how, how well you've proved that. Um, your preparation, your feasibility, again, kind of how much prep you've put into this application with your, with your partner. Um, the extent to which the project and mobility has been prepared and, and is feasible. So it makes sense that 
you want to go to uh, Berlin and, and work with this mentor and you know so does that actually sound feasible to what your objectives are um, and the outcomes what you aim to achieve as a result of your mobility so they're all split up into into the separate kind of point allocation for each area of uh, assessment and then just around the, the evaluation, so there's the cutoff date for your application. So then within the next two weeks, they will evaluate. And then on the third week, they will post the results or they will send out the results to the applicants. So that's when you will find out. And as we see at the beginning, this is on a rolling month to month. Apart from November, it'll keep going and going. So you, there's lots of time you know, to get your, your, your preparation done. And you want to go on to the next slide there, Katie, if it hasn't frozen. Um, <laughs> yeah, so just within the, um, as I said, we don't manage the, the award, but we do, we are here for advice and we are here um, for questions. But then again, there will be um, an ongoing uh, opportunity for questions um, with the Culture Moves Europe desk, and they will do this online. So there's the link there to it um, every Friday at 11 o'clock. So you can um, you can kind of get in touch with them there and, and they'll be doing live answers um, for people. Just there is a web, there is a, an email as well that we can give to you. I mean, it's on, their, on the, the Culture Moves Europe website, um, but we were kind of thinking, I'm sure they will be having hundreds and hundreds of people. So maybe this is a better way to get those kind of live answers. Um, I think the next slide is, yeah. So, so to date with the pilots over um, 2018, 2019 and, and 2020, um, we were pretty successful. We had 13 successful applicants um, in theater, visual arts, dance, curatorial practice, architecture, music and performance. So a broad range of artistic activity there. Um, and they traveled to places like Serbia, Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, uh, Spain. Um, so we do have a, a publication there that Leona just put in the chat, um, I think. Uh, we do have a publication um, with a QR code we can send to you as well with the results and kind of case studies for those uh, statistics, for those opportunities cases. Um, and then I think we have a slide, yeah. So just to give you a quick uh, roundup of what we're doing in the next couple of weeks before the end of the year, we have a cooperation projects web webinar on the 8th of December. Um, so if you're interested in developing a project or you're at that point where you, you want to apply, come along um, and we'll give you the kind of overall details and we'll be doing a application workshop for that in January. So uh, there are the two days for the cooperation projects, a networking event and a publication launch. We'll be doing in-person and hybrid, a mix, I suppose hybrid is in-person and online um, on December the 15th. So get in touch with us and we can send, we'll be posting out those details um, and sign up to our newsletter and events. Um, we obviously don't have our full list of 2023 events, but we will be busy for sure. Um, so we